We've been covering Chapter 2 ever since it launched in October, but since then there haven't been many game-changing updates. Now, I think the majority of the community actually likes not having to adapt to a new playstyle every week, but at the same time, there are some new meta strategies that we simply didn't see before Chapter 2. That's why today, we are going to be taking a look at some of the top discussions revolving around Fortnite's current meta. What's good everybody, it's your wonderful host Dan, and in this video, we should hopefully get you guys back up to speed with what's been going on in the competitive scene. We'd also like to congratulate Cheeto and Dorito Gaming for winning the 2500 V-Bucks giveaway. Check your inbox and congrats! Also, we're going to be doing these giveaways quite often, so don't worry if you didn't win this time. But before we hop into the video, you guys know the drill, ProGuys.com for the leading resource for getting better at Fortnite. We have structured courses along with pro coaches that can help guide you through your improvement process. We also provided pro content from pro players like Benji and Mongrel. So check us out, click the link in the description below. Alright everybody, the newest meta strategy that has taken the competitive scene by storm is pickaxe rotating. What is pickaxe rotating you might ask? Well, thanks for asking. Pickaxe rotating is a new phenomenon that has recently become much more popular due to the fact that there is no mobility in the game. Since everybody has to foot rotate, creating a temporary truce with your fellow rotators is the optimal strategy to get into his own safely. If you think this isn't a problem, then you are flat out mistaken. I just want to show you one clip, just a single clip of Mongrel rotating with quite literally half the lobby without anyone shooting each other. Roll it! Oh my god! <laughs> now, this is absolutely bonkers, guys. Never in a million years would I have thought that people would be rotating next to each other as if they were on the same team. Like, you could easily shoot the guy for 100 plus damage, but decide not to. I can understand it, though. If you guys ever played in a stacked endgame, you already know the lack of mobility items is absolutely crushing late game rotations. Competitive players are in this awkward spot where they are negatively affected regardless of the decisions they make. Say a player doesn't make this pickaxe truce and decides to fight every single person that rotates alongside him. Well, he's kinda shooting himself in the foot. Not only is he forcing the opponents to build and create much more difficult rotation for himself, but he's also going to be wasting all of his own materials trying to get himself in zone. And if you guys have been playing solos at all, you run out of mats pretty quickly. There really isn't a great solution to this problem. I mean, I would be very surprised if Epic Games came out and made a statement disallowing this sort of play, simply because they kind of created the problem themselves. Since there's not even a launch pad for people to recycle, they really have nobody to blame but themselves. People just want to make endgame, and it's not like they're teaming up to kill a single person. Let me put it like this. If this was a bannable offense, wouldn't an entire lobby focusing a player also be bannable? Think about it. You're basically colluding with an entire lobby to get a single player eliminated. The answer is no, you should definitely not be banned for this. I simply bring that up to make the point that sometimes you have to play a little bit more passive against players that are doing something advantageous for your game. In the case of the full lobby spamming a single player, they're focusing someone that isn't you. Why would you want to stop that? It's just bad game strategy. Anyways, I'm no expert on this topic, so I'd like to ask you guys a question. Do you think this new meta strategy is wrong? Should players be banned for this? Let me know in the comments down below. The next point that I think is quite relevant to Chapter 2 is Aim Assist. Obviously, this discussion has been brought up every season, but I think the new changes to Aim Assist warrant another discussion. I saw this post on Fortnite's competitive subreddit Shoot to the Top of the Forum, which basically called out Aim Assist as a form of aimbot. Take a look at this clip of Unknown Army absolutely laser a kid back to the lobby with his L2 spam. I'm feeling a little storm mode right now. I'm feeling a little, I'm feeling a little Aim Assist in my bone. I mean, if you were paying attention at all, you would see that even Unknown Army is surprised that he did so much damage. I personally play on keyboard and mouse, so I've never had the thrill of absolutely melting someone's HP with my AR. Maybe that's just because I'm not good at the game though. The thing is though, I see a lot of people taking clips of controller players beating people out of context. Oftentimes professional keyboard and mouse players are hitting very similar shots and not being called out for it in any way. For example, take a look at Nate Hill as he absolutely obliterates everyone who landed at Frenzy Farm. I've personally never seen so many headshots hit in one clip. And the best part about it is that Nate obviously plays on keyboard and mouse. So realistically, at the end of the day, you can't exactly say that control players can do something that keyboard and mouse players simply cannot. Now, of course, you can make the argument that controller players can hit these insane damage shots with more consistency. That I don't argue. But I would also say that controller players are often mechanically capped because they have less dexterity with a controller versus someone who has an entire keyboard. 
Do you think the current aim assist meta is skewed too far in favor of controller players, or are we in a pretty fair place right now? Tell me what you think in the comments. Next, I want to talk to you guys about a recurring problem that hasn't been addressed yet. I'm talking about grenades and explosives. This one I really didn't think would have to go on this list. I really thought that Epic would address the issue in a more meaningful way than they have. But here we are, so let's do this thing. The fact that the only nerf we saw to grenades was capping the max stack at 6 just a few weeks ago proves to me that Epic doesn't really know the gravity of this issue. Now, the real problem here is the spawn rate. Any place I want to drop, explosive items are so abundant that I can either have grenades or an RPG almost 100% of the time. In my opinion, explosives should be a rare and special item to own. The fact that there's five variants of RPGs that can drop starting from common, it just doesn't sit well with me. Instead, I think that going back to having the lowest variant of RPGs be blue would help address this problem. Also, a huge nerf to grenade spawns would adequately solve the problem too. I also think that another creative solution would be making RPGs fill two slots in your inventory. The introduction of the bandage bazooka really unlocked this potential in my mind. If the bandage bazooka is so overpowered such that it's only fair to take up twice the inventory slots that an item usually takes, why don't we do the same for other similarly overpowered items? And at this point in the game, RPGs could be considered overpowered. That's just my opinion of course, but either way, grenades and other explosive items are a huge part of the meta and will continue to be until Epic does something about it. Now the last point is going to be a little bit more on the serious side. Recently, there was a huge allegation and a leaked video which shows a Fortnite coach feeding Mongrel's squad external information regarding teams landing by them. I don't want to be biased here, so I'll just let you guys see the footage that was saved. We're griefing them, we're griefing them. They're contesting that team, what are they doing? What are they doing? <laughs> grief them, grief them, shoot them, shoot them! We, we, are, are they contested, Destiny? Wait, they went pleasant. Pleasant? What are they doing there? Destiny Jesus, FaZe Clan's personal Fortnite coach, was giving information to Mongrel that they otherwise would not have found out on their own. Destiny Jesus is notorious for his rotational pathing, working with a bunch of World Cup qualifiers to map out their early game rotations. The idea was if he was working with enough people, he would be able to map out all the rotations in a way such that they would not interact with each other and have a successful rotation. And it definitely worked, since a lot of players he coached made tons of money. But this situation, it's a little bit different. There's no way for Destiny Jesus to know the opponent's information without opening up their stream or doing something at least mildly shady. His coaching, which I put in quotation marks by the way, is quickly turning into cheating. He's basically giving his players a competitive advantage that nobody else can get, at least if they wanted to preserve competitive integrity. The reason I bring this up isn't to do a hit piece on these guys, I'm bringing it up because Fortnite coaches are only becoming more and more relevant these days. More signings means that coaching will become meta within top competitive play. I think that it's very important we have this conversation up front about what role we think that these coaches should have when it comes to the game of Fortnite. I know this doesn't specifically affect you watching this video, but say that you come up against someone who has an advantage on you because they had a coach that was giving them information that they shouldn't have. I don't think you would feel all too happy about that, now would you? Hopefully we as a community can address these problems in a mature way before Epic Games has to step in and make a heavy handed ruling. Because if one thing's for certain, Epic is a wild card and can make decisions that are often unpopular for the sake of competitive integrity. <coughs> Jarvis. To conclude, let's briefly go over everything we talked about today. Number one, pickaxe rotating. First, pickaxe rotations have become extremely popular due to the fact that no mobility items has cornered competitive players. Whether or not this is a legal maneuver is yet to be known. Hopefully, an introduction of mobility items will nullify this issue before it has to be addressed. Number two, aim assist. Secondly, the argument of aim assist will always be a hot topic in any meta, especially when changes are made to the tool. At the end of the day, I'll be convinced that it's too overpowered when we see controller players consistently dominating the leaderboards. Number three, grenades and explosives. Third, explosives are still too darn OP in today's meta. The nerfs simply have not been enough to satiate my taste buds. You're headed down the right track, Epic, but explosives shouldn't be this detrimental to one's game. Number four, Fortnite coaches. Finally, we need to have a mature conversation regarding the limits of Fortnite coaches. When do useful tips cross the line to cheating? All right, guys, that's it for today's video. We really hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to use the code PROGUIDES when you make any sort of purchases. It really helps us out, and we really do appreciate it. Comment down below what you guys thought about this video and what you'd like to see next. 
We aim to bring you guys daily quality content, so do us a favor by liking this video, subscribing to the channel, and show ProGuides.com some love for bringing you this post. Thanks again for watching. Once again, it's your host, Dan. You can find me everywhere at Daniel Ammerman, and we'll see you on the next one.